quick tip today on the installation of your Paratech solid sole shoring systems. Remember when we go to mechanical shores, we want to try and have a slightly lower insertion point uh, than the rest of our timber shores, and we want to have slightly tighter spacing. That way when we go to build out around our mechanicals with timber, there's an allowance for that, uh, it just in regards to space, and we can basically build out that timber without depressurizing or taking down our mechanicals. So everything can get shored up and secured, and then we can get into that protected zone and take these down. In order to do that, uh, there's some nice holes on the side of the wall plate. Just a quick tip on how you evaluate where you're gonna put your assemblies to make this meet those requirements. So in this example, We've got timber shore solid soles uh, at 45 degrees being thrown to eight foot insertion points. When you come to the wall plate, your first insertion hole down at the bottom only sits, sits up about six inches. It's not a full foot. From that point forward, every other hole spacing is at 12 inch increments. So if I count that bottom hole as one, then when I come up and I hit that eighth hole up here, I'm actually at about seven feet, six inches. So a couple things that that does for me. Number one, it's gonna reduce my insertion point just a little bit, and then when I go to put nail pads on this strut or on this raker to marry up with the timbers, it bumps or scabs those nail pads out just about right so that all your bracing looks pretty clean and neat. If I gone ahead and jumped up to the next hole, I actually would have been at an eight foot six inch insertion point, and then by the time I add nail pads to it, I'm well above my timber shores for rakers, and it's gonna make my bracing kind of whop or jod. So, just quick tip on how you count holes and how you design your insertion points when you're doing large systems.